And we are back. It is our weekly review time once again. And today's focus is going to be on the team of the season swap cards. Now, because I have so many coins built up and I have a lot of time to grind up fodder packs anyway, I have opted to take all three of the team of the season swap cards so far. That's being Giovanni Reina, Dimitri Payet and Moises Saicedo. Now, Ooh, you're hard showing off because... Today's review will be about whether or not I think you should do the same or whether you should be taking the fodder packs in the relevant situations. And on top of that, we have all of our usual reviews about the current SBCs that are out, as well as my thoughts on my red picks from last week. If you didn't know, I did get rank one. Check out my video last week or a couple of days ago before you watch my reviews on the players that I got in that, as well as essentially the entire Eredivisie team of the season. So let's jump straight into the review straight away and you'll come down to the bench right here and you will see that I have got all three players grouped together and we'll do them in order of how they are unlocked so then you can make your decisions as and when you get to them. So we'll start with Giovanni Reina. He of course is in competition with an 85 times 5 pack and for me I wasn't too particularly impressed with this Giovanni Reina. I think if you're able to get the 85 times 5 and of course pack one of yourselves the Premier League team of the seasons that is going to be more worth it than taking this Giovanni Reina. He's a relatively good card, but he's just lacking in certain key areas. With his height, you really want to play him up front or in midfield. When you play him up front, he lacks the shooting. If you give him something like a finisher to boost his finishing up to 99, you then lose the pace aspect and... His strength and aggression, although the 90 strength is good, you do notice the lack of aggression when you give him something like that to play him up front. So I then tried him out wide. I gave him an engine. I gave him a marksman. But again, he was just lacking. His passing didn't feel as good as it should. And eventually I ended up giving him a hawk and playing him in midfield. And that is where I got the best out of him as a box-to-box -box attack-minded midfielder. Now, with the Hawk, he then gets his aggression up to 74, which is a lot more beneficial than a lot of the other chemistry styles. It, of course, boosts his pace a little bit more whilst boosting his shooting, in particularly, of course, that long shot and shot power. The only problem is then you're relying on a box-to-box -box midfielder that only has 46 interceptions, 49 defensive awareness, 49 stand tackle, 51 slide. So, for me... Like I say, he has uses. For me, he's better as a box-to-box -box mid just by using his size and his presence, the six foot one, the high strength and the relatively high aggression with a Hawk. But all round for me, Giovanni Reyna was an absolute miss. Second player up is Dimitri Payet. Now, I think this card is absolutely nuts. And I think EA knew that this card was going to be absolutely nuts, which is why they put him up against an 85 times 10 pack. The... Best pack that we have seen over the last few years, as we know, as we've been at the end of the last two FIFAs, we've had the 85 times 10s repeatables, and you know how much good stuff you get from that pack. So that's why they put this Payet up against this pack. I think if you take the 85 times 10, you are nearly enough guaranteed to get one or two Premier League team of the seasons. So it's a real tough one because this Payet is absolutely incredible. I gave him an engine. I know a lot of people are giving him a marksman or a hunter playing him up front. I gave him an engine because I really wanted to boost the agility and balance through the roof. He's got five-star skill. His shooting is near enough immaculate. With the engine, his pace goes to relatively good as well. And he is genuinely one of the best cams, if not the best cam I have used this year. Good enough stamina to last a 90-minute match. He's not going to go into extra time. But 93 strength with high balance and agility, five-star skill. He is so hard to tackle. He's just so, so good on the ball. And honestly, just given the fact that it's a unique card, I don't know how many other five-star skill cams we're going to get with this sort of physicality. Everyone was expecting Odegaard to get this absolutely crazy card for the season he's had but he's only come out with a 92 rated card that's got a three star weak foot whereas this is a 91 rated card yes that's one rating lower but the stats all round are more suited to someone that plays at cam and he's got a four star weak foot as well so I think this is a card that you should be going for obviously if you're not particularly fussed about having French league teams then by all means take the 85 times 10 but for me as an all-round choice, I think Dimitri Payet is worth it over the 85 times 10. Finally, we have Moises Saicedo, and this card is incredible. This card is absolutely insane. I'd love to know how much he would be if he was on the market. Obviously, he's only 3-star, three 3-star, three which is 
A bit of a problem. I know people don't particularly like to see the three-star, three-star, and that may affect his price, especially given the fact that he's from Ecuador and Brighton. So it's not the best linkable card, but he is absolutely incredible in-game. I've used pretty much every version of Kante outside the Fuck Birthday. That Fuck Birthday F SBC is still coming in around a million coins, and obviously this Saicedo is free. I think Saicedo is better than Kante. I really do. I think the extra height matters as well. And if you give him an artist, it makes him explosive. And I know a lot of people like going lengthy with their CDMs. But if you're using someone that's not like six foot three, six foot four at CDM and you want to change up how you use it, getting someone like Saicedo and giving him an artist makes him fantastic because he's so nippy. And when players try and turn you, he can use his explosiveness to just dart in quickly. His tackling stats and his physical stats are absolutely incredible anyway, so you don't need to boost them. He's got insane pace as well, so by giving him that artist, making him explosive, making his agility and balance near enough 99, making his passing go through the roof as well, it just makes him so, so useful, and I would really recommend this card. He's up against an 83 times 15 and... Anyone that's opened any 83 or 84 packs over the last couple of weeks will tell you, you don't tend to get anything good in those sort of packs. So I think an 83 times 15 is not anywhere near guaranteeing you a team of the season, especially a team of the season like Premier League. Maybe once the EFL TOTS comes out after you watch this video or while you're watching this video, then you'll probably get one of those in 83 times 15 but they're not going to be cards on the level of this Saicedo. I think he is absolutely incredible, and I would thoroughly recommend picking him up over the 83 times 15 As for the other objective player out at the moment, that is, of course, Ollie Watkins. I've used him in a couple of games of champs, pretty high-level champs. For me, this card is bang average. He's got two goals in two games, but I'm Tell you, kid you not, they are literal tappings. They are, I've done all the hard work with someone else, passed it to Ollie Watkins, and he's put the ball in the net. He's just lacking certain things in key areas. The pace split isn't great. His shooting is fantastic. His balance and agility could be a little bit better for someone playing up front. Like with Rayner, the strength and aggression split makes him really hard to use as a physical player. His passing needs a little bit of improvement as well. And I just think at this stage of the game, there are a lot of other players available that are better than Ollie Watkins, especially of the four-star skill, five-star weak foot variety. And we'll get onto another one of those very shortly. But yeah, by all means, if you've got the chance to do this Watkins, I did him whilst playing champs to unlock him in the first place. So if you get him, I wouldn't say a particularly use him in your club. He's probably just going to end up being SBC fodder at the end of the day. But yeah, just a pretty much bang average card. Speaking of four-star skill, five-star weak foot players, we move on to our first SBC of the review section, which is Luke De Jong. And this card is nuts. This card is absolutely insane. If you know me, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I think Charles de Ketelaar is the best striker on the game that certainly I have used. And I'm very interested in potentially getting a hold of that Erling Haaland if I can. I like having these four-star skill, five-star weak foot tall physical strikers that you can make lengthy and I know Haaland can't be lengthy now but it is what it is but this De Jong with a marksman becomes lengthy and he's basically just a smaller version of the Ketelaar he's absolutely cracked out of his mind with the lengthy and that's pace split he flies away from defenders he's got 99 attack positioning 99 finishing 99 shot power 94 long shots his dribbling is insane 95 reactions 99 ball control 99 jumping 93 strength i don't know what more you want in a striker he is absolutely ridiculous and I would thoroughly recommend this card. It's an 83 and an 85 rated squad. He's there for over a month. He's very linkable. He's got a perfect link to this guy, Vermeer, who really impressed me this weekend. I can't stress that enough. He really, really impressed me when I used him. And look, if you're like me, who likes that sort of style of striker, pick up this Luke de Jong. He is so, so good. Like I say, the only slight issue is how you would get him into teams, but... Honestly, this is a ridiculous card, either as a substitute or if you can get him in as a starter. He is insane. Same as this guy over here, Gerard De Lefeu, who really did surprise me. Like His stats suggest that he should be good, but again, he shouldn't be this good. 
I think they've done something recently to players with high dribbling. They just seem to be a lot more responsive in the most recent patch. And by giving him a marksman again, his agility is already 99. His balance is already 94. But giving him the marksman gives him 99 dribbling stat and 99 ball control with 89 reactions. He's near enough impossible to tackle. And then on top of that, you boost his finishing up to 97. Shot power again into the 90s. Long shots into the 90s. He's got 96 pace as standard. 89 strength and 91 stamina. This guy can go all game, whether you're playing on the wing, at cam, up front, wherever you want. This is a fantastic card. Again, he's hard to link if you're going to play him from the start, but as a super sub, he is nuts. And from there, I suppose we'll do a quick review of my red picks. Nathan Ake is absolutely insane. I don't think anyone's going to be too surprised about that. He was one of the players I really wanted from the community tots. He is, in my opinion, one of the best centre-backs on the game. In the mould of Sergio Ramos with the pace split in favour of acceleration. So he's got really high acceleration and he's lengthy. Great balance and agility. Near enough maxed out defending. Near enough maxed out physicals. Obviously, the only downside is that he's 5 foot 11. But whether you're playing him at centre-back or at left-back, you are looking at one of the best centre-backs or left-backs in the game. And for 250k, if you've got that sort of coins and you can link him in, maybe you pack... De Bruyne or Haaland in your team of the season stuff this week. I thoroughly recommend picking up this Nathan Ake. David De Gea is just another goalkeeper. For me, you only notice goalkeepers that play bad. It's very rarely you notice a goalkeeper that plays well. De Gea, I've not noticed play bad. So, yeah, again, he's just another goalkeeper at the end of the day. There are so many high-rated Premier League goalkeepers. It's not particularly worth talking about. But, yeah, he's not bad. He's just not amazing either. He's just another goalkeeper. In terms of the rest of the Eredivisie, Tots, I was really impressed with all of them, to be honest. This Gertruda and this Hanko, if you haven't unlocked these two, whether you're playing them as a centre-back partnership or as a right-back-left-back partnership, they are absolutely nuts as well. These guys can play anywhere across the back line as a pair. Obviously, they both play for Feyenoord, so they give each other one chemistry straight off the bat. If you're then linking them up with De Jong, you've near enough got a full chem set up just from those three players. You would then just need a Slovenian, I believe. No, a Slovakian. If you can get yourself a Slovakian manager, I don't know if there actually is one on the game. But if you had a Slovakian manager and then you had Hanko, Gertruda and De Jong, that's all full chem. So, thoroughly recommend them. Hanko can play perfectly at left back, left centre back in a back three, or left centre back in a back two. Gertruda can play perfectly as a right back, as a right centre back in a back three, or a right centre back in a back two. Really love them as a combination. Thoroughly recommend picking them up. Hanko was obviously a free objective, so if you didn't get him done, I would say that you have missed out. But if you have got him, Pick up Gertruda. He's only like 50k. Put them together. They are a fantastic partnership. Uh, Bergvine, we obviously packed first owner untradeable. He is insane. Another good player that is a really good super sub. I actually think I prefer Delefeu over Bergvine as a super sub from the players that I've seen this week. So read into that what you will. And then, like I say, from there, Kudus, Kotsku, Pavlidis. They're just your generic team of the seasons. I wouldn't say either of them or any of them are particularly amazing, but... In-game performances, when I used my full Eredivisie team, they didn't look out of place. So, relatively good cards. As you say, if you want to have a bit of fun, put all the Eredivisie players together. It's a really cheap squad to build and a lot of fun. And it's still able to get results for me. And yeah, I don't think there's anything else I really need to talk about. I didn't get the chance to use Ito yet. So, I'll give him a chance as and when I can. Kim Min Jae is really good. Spoke about him last week as well, about how cheap he was. And obviously, I did end up selling Turam and Ben Arce, so I didn't get the chance to try them out. But that is going to be my lot of reviews today. I know I've gone through an awful lot of players and probably rambled on a little bit towards the end. But hopefully, you have received some informative decision making, especially when it comes to picking up these swap players and the likes of De Jong and De La Feu. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with my player reviews next week on everything that comes out over the next seven days. Thank you very much for watching.